I didn't really know what I was getting into, truly. Luna. It's a pretty girl. <laughs> All right, uh, welcome back to this channel. Um, it's been a minute. I thought I'd do a little bit of an update and a little bit of a story time. Let's see, I think my last post was in October. Basically what ended up happening was while at work I got I injured my back. So I've never injured myself technically at work. Like I've never had to go um, get seen by a doctor or anything. Like I've gotten scratches. I've had a few bites, but none of them were bad enough that I had to uh, seek medical attention. This one I think had been coming for a while. I've always had back issues my whole life. It's kind of a hereditary thing, but also um, doing this job puts a lot of strain on your back, especially if you're not being very careful with lifting and bending and twisting and things like that. So I've always had issues with my back since starting in this field. So I think this was all like a culmination of things because the day before I got injured, I had carried this dog who was like 40-ish, something in the 40s pounds um, across the shelter because we were moving him from Parvo into our um, isolation ward because he had kettle cough. So I think the combination of carrying him and then cleaning and doing laundry and things like that just kind of pushed my back to a point so that the next day when I carried a much smaller dog, like maybe 15 pounds, it totally made my back seize up completely. I could barely walk. It got progressively worse throughout the day, like quickly. So I carried that dog at like 9 a.m., came back, cleaned her kennel out, um, did some laundry, and then all of a sudden it started just like seizing up and being incredibly painful. So I ended up leaving work and going to urgent care and I had to wait for like two and a half to three hours <laughs> to even be seen by the doctor. I don't think, like when I went in, I put my pain level at like seven and by the time he saw me, I like tried to get up out of the chair and I could barely stand up from the chair and he was like, wow, you're in a lot of pain. And I said, yeah, I am. <laughs> we ended up going through this whole thing with pain meds. I did physical therapy for a while. I got x-rays. Um, it turns out I have, you know, the start of arthritis in my back. Obviously that it's a while coming, you know, from years of just bad back issues and strain from this job too. There was like decreased disc space and then sciatica as well. I think even that little bit of extra strain just put it over the edge. For about a month, I did physical therapy. Um, and then actually my back felt like the best it has in <laughs> years and that was really difficult to deal with because i still went into work i just did some modified stuff i didn't lift too much for a while after that it just really made me like cognizant of taking care of my back and it was funny because i do yoga pretty much every week at least um i try to do it every single day but it was funny because most of the physical therapy exercises were things I was doing in yoga already. So I think that's why I kind of staved it off as much as possible to this point because I was already doing exercises that were helping my back. A lot better now, I do have weeks where I'm like not thinking and I'm just doing and then my back hurts because I've been bending over and lifting wrong and you know doing all the stuff I shouldn't because I feel better. So in the midst of all that, I don't think that was a trigger, but my mental health really declined as well. So I was just in a really bad place mentally that I needed to just focus on myself. So that's what I did. We ended up going back to Colorado where I'm from for Thanksgiving, which was great. We only really see my family once a year um, because of traveling and you know health issues and things like that. And then when I got back, I got sick <laughs> because lately every time I travel, I get sick and I don't know if it's from being on the plane or from encountering someone that I either know is sick or don't know is sick. I don't know. But like when we came back from Alaska, I got sick as well. Just a lot of health stuff in the end of the year. So <laughs> kind of re reevaluate some priorities for the end of the year. It gave me time to kind of rethink and plan for the year as far as this channel goes. So looking forward to making more videos. Um, I think I have a better idea of how I want to structure things going forward and then really focusing on some story times, some topics, 
some vlogging too as well and all of that good stuff. Luna's hydrating and you should too. Our caseload really picked up at, in the end of the year because the weather is getting colder. Everything is moving around more. There's more uh, moisture in the air, uh, more animals and people out <laughs> in Arizona. The Parvo's moving through everything now, so we've been pretty busy. It's been difficult but like good you know because we're we're helping a lot of animals we just had a couple cases that were a little bit difficult where they get past <laughs> the initial five-day treatment line and they're just still symptomatic so trying to figure out what else is going on um and trying to get them over that hump one thing i didn't mention which i didn't really notice until i started where i'm working now is that parvo really affects the black and tan dogs to a much greater degree than they do other dogs. Your German Shepherds, your Rottweilers, your Dobermans, it all, it hits them really hard. So a lot of times you'll see these dogs being completely fine and crazy one day and literally the next day they're like chill and not really um, active as much. And that's how quickly it happens, especially for those breeds. The next day it's like, they're even more down and tanking really fast. For a lot of those, we usually start them on a second round of antibiotics, like right away. So you have your one um, like broad spectrum antibiotic we always use, and then we have a second supplemental antibiotic that we'll use for more difficult cases. And so we just start them on it right away, especially for these ones that we know like genetically they don't do as well. So we had a couple of those, but I have a theory that I think Husky mixes are kind of falling into that category now because we've had a couple rounds of like Alaskan Huskies and Siberian Huskies that just haven't been doing well. Like they end up going on the second antibiotic, but at that point we're fighting against the infection. That's like the infection has gotten a head start at that point. I have a theory that the Huskies are going to, you know, come into the black and tan category and we need to just start hitting them harder because it's been difficult when they have to stay longer because that means there's less that we can bring in and treat on like a regular schedule. There's the update. Okay, so the second part of this video, I was going to do a little bit of a story time because I haven't really talked about it on this channel yet. And that was just how I got my start in not only vet med, but shelter medicine as well. Again, we'll go through some other story times too I want to talk about because I was in this field during COVID. So I want to talk about that. My experience in an open admission shelter versus like a nonprofit, things like that we'll get more into. Just getting started in the field, I wanted to kind of give you guys an idea because I feel like a lot of people ask about how to get into this field or into animal welfare in general. And it is kind of different for everyone. My story is kind of like, I was in the right place at the right time in a way, and I just got lucky with the people that I was working with. But we'll start from the beginning. So basically I'll tell the story of my previous um, career in a different video because I actually went to school for journalism. I graduated with a degree. I went and got a reporting job. I ended up leaving that job to for another job in Colorado. So I worked as a reporter in Idaho and then I got a job in Colorado as an editor. So I moved there. And then while I was working for this magazine as an editor, it was a regular nine to five job. I had a really long commute. I actually had to commute an hour both ways in Denver traffic, which if you know anything about Denver traffic, it's like congested all the time. It makes me claustrophobic to think about it. Anyway, so I had my weekends off. I had my job, you know, doing doing the thing. And so I decided to kind of look into learning more about things I was interested in, you know, developing hobbies. But I also started volunteering at a local shelter in Denver. It was kind of a long process because you, they have you go through all these classes before you even start anything, handling animals or anything. Um, you have to go through orientation and then you take, I think, one or two classes about animal behavior and handling and protocols and things like that. So I did that. So at the shelter, you were required to do your first three months of just um, cleaning laundry and dishes. I started doing that. Um, I would normally uh, be sent to clean puppy kennels, which is ironic now because that's all I do is clean 
rescuing puppy kennels. The shelter was split into like your adoptable animals on one side um, where the public could go and walk through and then another side with like holding kennels for strays and things like that. So in the back of the holding area, they had a separate room just for puppies. And so they actually had two rooms. They had a room with, I think like four split runs. So it would be eight runs. And then another smaller room with shorelines, which are like smaller stacked kennels. So that's where all their puppies under a certain age would go and live until they could get surgery or they could get adopted or whatever. So normally I would be cleaning the puppies and then after cleaning the puppies, I would go help wherever else I was needed. After that, I graduated to dog walking so I could just really focus on getting the dogs out every morning. So I would go for like four hours, like every Sunday morning and clean. And then I would and walk dogs after a little more. <laughs> fun, you know, <laughs> getting to like interact with them, um, starting to work with animals that were like scared and shut down in the shelter, um, which became a huge passion of mine too. So that was really great time. I learned a ton. My husband actually like made a comment. You're like really happy when you come back from that. And it's not like you are when you come back from work. You could see how much it did for me mentally. And so I think I volunteered at that shelter for about a year, like at that year mark or whatever. Um, they ended up putting out a call for the volunteers saying they needed help in the clinic. So I volunteered because one of the days that they needed help with was Sunday, which was the day I worked anyway. So I ended up going in there and basically just cleaning up in their hospital kennels. So they had a couple different rooms for animals to stay in the clinic that needed a little more medical attention. I would just clean kennels in there and um, walk dogs. I ended up helping them with their vaccine clinics when they had them, so I was just like pulling up vaccines and handing them to the doctor to, you know, vaccinate the dogs that would come in through those clinics. After a while, they started having me fill the meds for like the other animals in the shelters. You have your animals in the clinic where it's, um, you know, they need more attention. Like they can't be just out handled by anyone. They have to have like special handling or we're monitoring them for some things. And then you have dogs outside of the clinic that don't have as many medical issues that don't need as close attention, but they still are on medications. I would pull up all of the meds and make meatballs and get them ready. And then I would go with the tech to medicate animals. That was really the first like exposure to anything medical that I had had because I didn't know anything about a uh, vet tech <laughs> job or much less in an animal shelter. The only thing I had seen growing up were commercials for tech schools. So like in Colorado, Bell Ray is the biggest <laughs> one you see during daytime TV. So that was the only thing I really knew and that's not even knowing anything really, <laughs> you know, you just know that you can go to school for veterinary technology, but you don't know what it is. I didn't really see a lot of crazy stuff happen while I was there. I think a stray cat got brought in that needed to be euthanized. So that was really my first exposure. I didn't really do anything with like surgery or anything. I didn't help with procedures or bandages or anything like that. It wasn't really that much hands-on, but it was enough to get me interested in it. Crazy to me because I, looking back, I never would have thought that I would go into this. Like it was never on my radar to look into this as a profession. I thought it was too much science, too much math, and that yeah, I just wouldn't be good at it. <laughs> Being able to volunteer in the clinic and get like a, a slower exposure to it really helped develop my interest, I guess, because there wasn't any pressure. Maybe if you just go through school, it could, maybe turn you off to that. So getting exposure to that slowly like this was, I think, crucial for me getting into it because I didn't have the pressure, but I still got the exposure. Basically, my husband and I decided to move to Missouri because it was gonna be better for his job in theory. Um, and we were moving, where we were moving was gonna be closer to his family. So we decided to make that move from Colorado. When we made that move, I was kind of, disenchanted about my career. I, you know, wasn't where I wanted to be in that career. And then I didn't even feel like excited about it or passionate about it. When we made that move, I was like, you know, I'm going to 
try animal welfare. I'm going to see what it's all about, see if there's a way for me to fit into it. I really felt called to it and I don't know how to explain that better. It just felt like the right decision. It's really frustrating the thing I went so long not in this field and doing what I do because it's, I, it feels like it's what I was meant to do. So when we made that move, we went out there together for I think a week or two weeks just to look for a job for me and then look for a place to live. While we were out there, I was applying to um, a bunch of shelters. The main one I applied to, I actually applied to be a clinic admin position, which is more of like an administrative assistant, but you're in the clinic. And I thought that I could easily, well, not easily, but I thought I had more of the qualifications to do that job than any of the other jobs that were posted other than like animal care. And I was completely prepared to take an animal care position because I, you know, that's what I, that's pretty much all I was qualified to do as far as animals. So one place I applied for animal care, this place I applied for clinic admin. And so I thought I could, you know, learn about animal welfare, the shelter system, um, learn about teching, um, and be in the clinic still so exposed to it, but not have all the pressure of like learning it. So I thought that one would be a good fit for me. They ended up calling me for an interview for the clinic admin position. And so when I went in, I had the initial interview and then they had me come in for a working interview. And <laughs> I go into the clinic and to the working interview <laughs> and the manager pairs me up with this guy who's a tech and we're kind of just going along I'm asking questions and stuff and I'm like they're showing me more of like teching stuff and I was like maybe they think I applied to be a tech and I didn't I don't know overwhelming though because I I hadn't even trimmed nails at that point like I I had no animal handling experience basically, except for what I had done volunteer wise. And that was just walking dogs and cleaning. Very kind of intimidated because he had asked me like, do you, you want to trim their nails? And I was like, I don't really feel comfortable because I've not really done that. I went and sat down with the manager afterwards and she was like, okay, what do you think? And I said, uh, I mean, I'm willing to do whatever, like I wanna learn. I think I eventually wanna be a tech and like that's my goal at that point. I was telling her it was my goal. I didn't really know for sure, but you know, you say things in an interview to get the job. So I said, yeah, but I applied for the admin position and she was like, well, I don't have anyone here to train on that. You know, I would have to figure out another day for you to come in and train on that if that's what you want. And I said, well, I do want to want I do want to be a tech eventually or an assistant or something and but I don't have any experience. I think I said I'm not certified or anything and she was like, "Well, no one is." <laughs> so she was like, "We'll just teach you cuz we really need a tech and you have enough of a basis so we can like teach you if that's what you want." I said, "Yeah, great because that's what I wanted really anyways to be in the clinic and I'd rather be learning that than out cleaning kennels, not that there's anything wrong with it, but like that's where my interest was. So I might as well just say yes and figure it out later. So that's what I did. So they ended up hiring me at $11 an hour. <laughs> it was a start in this field. Again, I was just at the right place at the right time where I was had enough of a little bit of a basis where I had medicated animals technically and I had, you know, cared for them and like I knew about vaccines and stuff. So it was enough of a basis for me to, you know, for them to take a chance on me. The best decision I probably ever made to say like, yes, let's do this and not be, you know, thrown off by like, oh, you're gonna be doing all this now, which, it, cause again, I didn't really know what I was getting into, truly. I had no idea, it just felt right. Um, it felt like where I was supposed to be and what I was supposed to do and it was all coming together. That started, you know, three years at that shelter in Missouri and then, moving here just started me on this career path that I don't know what I would do if I wasn't doing this. Always in my mind thank that manager for <laughs> taking a chance on me because I like why did you but thank you. <laughs> that is how I got my start in vet med and animal welfare in general so I started as a volunteer. Uh, I think a lot of people that I talk to say they started as animal care 
um, like doing that job. And I, it's kind of the same. I mean, you don't get as much exposure to things when you're just a volunteer. Um, but at the same time, I kind of was put into the right positions to learn more and, you know, get more confident in pursuing um, med the medical side versus I feel like a lot of people <laughs> kind of get stuck in animal care because we always need animal care technicians and no one wants to let go of them when they want to move up or anything. So um, I kind of leapfrogged that situation. But at the same time, I still started with cleaning kennels, doing laundry, doing dishes, um, you know, scooping poop especially puppy poop. That's really where we all start and we should not forget that because no one is above cleaning kennels and scooping poop. I'm just gonna say it. We will do at least monthly vlogs that include work related things. So um, be on the lookout for that. We're gonna do some story times about cases. We're gonna talk about different topics like um, special diets and you know surgeries and things and then we'll talk about different diseases all of this is coming from like a shelter point of view if you have other questions or anything i'll do my best to leave some other resources that you can go look into again from my perspective as a shelter focused vet tech um i'm going to talk a little bit about those and how we um how we use certain things or how we uh, treat certain illnesses and things like that from a shelter perspective. So thank you guys for watching. Um, leave any comments down below, anything you are curious about, any questions you have, all of that good stuff down below, and we will see you next time.